God is a God of dialogue. God is a God who speaks and he's always speaking. There are a lot of people who would say, well, I believe that you know God spoke in the Old Testament. And obviously God spoke uh, in, in and through Jesus and the apostles, but you know what? I don't, I don't know that God speaks to us anymore like that. There's lots of different reasons why people believe that, but here's what's important for us to understand. God spoke to Samuel because he had a task of reformation upon his life. And I believe the reason why God speaks to us and why it's necessary for each and every one of us to know how to, under, how to hear and to understand how God is speaking to us and when God is speaking to us is because God's voice is the single most important factor in your life in fulfilling the purpose for which you were put on this planet. You're not just put on this planet to kind of make it up as you go along and hope that when you get to heaven, God will say, hey, that was pretty good. I mean, it's kind of like a craft project. God sent you to earth with some glitter, some Elmer's glue, construction paper, and stuff. let's see what they come up with. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians 2.10 that you're his workmanship, that he has good works and a good plan for your life that he prepared before the foundations of the world. Here's my question for you. If God has an intricate blueprint for your life and my life, how in the world will we ever know that we're fulfilling it if God only speaks to us in generalities that seven billion other people can claim as their own? Speaking is not just something that God does. Communication is part of who God is. What's the first line of the Lord's Prayer? Come on, we all learned it. Our Father, not just our Creator. Our Father, why is that significant? Because a Father is relational. The very first thing Jesus teaches his disciples about prayer is that if you're going to pray, you need to relate to God as a father. And what that implies is communication, intimacy, closeness. If God really is a creator, if he has all power and he reveals himself as a father and he loves us, and you and I have a spirit created in his image, why would God not take advantage of that? Why would God not do that? What kind of a father gives birth to a child and stands back and go, I'm never gonna to speak to you again. I mean, can you imagine a kid running, a kid running into the living room where a dad was and say, dad, dad, look, what do, you, what do you think about this and that color? And he goes. And five years ago, he wrote down on a piece of paper, it says, I love you. So every time the kid comes in, he goes, dad, dad, today I graduated from high school. He just holds it up, I already said it. Just repeating what I said a long time ago. It's still true, yeah. No, but the child wants to hear the dad today say, I'm so proud of you, today. God's not the God of the deist that sits back and winds up the universe, throws it out there and says, oh, let's see what happens. Now God is a father. He gets down on his knee and he talks with us. God still speaks.